So I watched episode 9 of House of the Dragon and we finally saw the creation of the green console but anyway let's break it down this episode okay so this episode opens up with alice and finds out the death of king viserys but after that she goes immediately to her father to tell him the last words of that viserys said and i know that many didn't like that scene because it looks like a bit of a cliche when in reality as we watch it into this episode the targaryen civil war was inevitable since otto and the majority of the members of the king's small council were already prepared to put Aegon as king instead of rhaenyra so the whole alice sense misunderstanding was not a way to push forward the whole story but actually was a way to allow the character of Alicent to do her things without feeling guilty because we have to remember that this Alicent is really different from the Alicent from the books because the Alicent that we see in Two House of the Dragon is much more gentle in some regards and I honestly prefer this way so there is a smaller difference between who is right and who is wrong among the greens and the blacks so that we find ourselves into that great zone that only shows like this and game of thrones were able to give us but also another major change was regarding how the corpse of Viserys was treated because the whole plan form an alliance of all the lords that don't want Rhaenyra as queen of westeros and preparing the coronation of Aegon required a lot of time so the corpse of Viserys into the books were left to rot and decompose for days so much so that even right were able to feast on his body and again to show that the greens of this series are better than the greens of the books allowing the viewers to empathize also with the council of the greens and not only with the blacks but anyway i'm digressing sorry so alison find out that there was already a plan to put Aegon as king and we see that she was almost disgusted by it just like lord beastbury that ends up killed by sir crispin while thailand lannister explained to alison and most of the lords that swear to defend the succession of rhaenyra were long dead and into the books he says that that was 24 years ago so he and many other lords didn't swear that oath since most of them at the time were only child and another difference with the books is that crispin instead of smashing accidentally the head of lord beastbury he basically cut his throat with a knife making the actual first blood of the dance of dragons but after crispin killed that poor guy the lord commander of the royal guard lord westerling decided to leave the council and his position since he would only serve a rightful king or an heir and to be honest with you i usually don't mention about the prophecies of elena targaryen because they all contain evil spoilers but this time they hit it pretty hard because into the next episode we'll probably see the most brutal scene of this show so be prepared for that but after that we have the start of the search for prince Aegon and while Sir Eric and his twin Sir Crispin and Aemon are searching for Aegon Otto is basically doing the spring cleaning of the court to eliminate any potential obstacle to the coronation of Aegon as king of Westeros but then we also see Sir Eric mentioning to his twin the existence of E.T. but basically into the Song of Ice and Fire book series it's a really distant and mysterious place and on itself it's basically a reference to Chinese empire and in the meantime we also see one of the Aegon's bastard sons while at the same time Aemon says to Crispin that he's more fit to be king than Aegon but at the end they were able to find Aegon thanks to the help of Missaria. But then we jump back to Alice and they is trying to convince Rhaenys to help her instead of Rhaenyra basically remembering her that the potential fall of her house is all to the Rhaenyra's action but then we jump to Aegon and they finally were able to find him but at the end Aemon and Crispin were able to bring him back but after that Alison tries once again to confront her father about the possibility of sparing Rhaenyra and her children but of course we know that will never happen and unfortunately after that we have probably the creepiest scene into this show till now and honestly I don't want to describe it so I will move on but after that we have Rhaenys that is freed by one of the two twins unfortunately they were divided by the crowd of people and basically she is bringing it to the dragon pit just when Aegon was about to become king and we see Aegon changing a bit from I don't want to be king to well I look pretty cool with the crown on my head while probably Aemon was dying of jealousy just like Daemon when Viserys became king but as a side note I honestly didn't like how they portrayed the crown of Aegon the Conqueror because it should be of Valyrian steel but also ornated by a lot of rubies but also if you didn't know all the crowns in A Song of Ice and Fire have a meaning and especially the crown of Aegon the Conqueror should represent power itself and a king that seeks domination and conquest while the crown of Viserys that belonged to 
King Jeheris should symbolize wisdom and prosperity. But the episode ends with Rhaenys that is able to stop the party when she's able to take Melaise. And in the end she spares all the greens, probably out of pity for Alicent, that into that moment was only a mother that was trying to protect her family, just like Rhaenys would do for her family. But anyway, this was a really great episode. So as rating for this episode, I'll give it an honest and solid 9 out of 10. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video and my observations about this episode, I really appreciate if you leave me a follow and a like, but also deeply appreciate if you share this video and my channel with your friends or on the internet in general, because that can really help my channel to grow and allows me to make more of this type of content slash video. But also let me know your opinion in the comments below. Did you enjoy this episode? But as always, have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Ciao.